I've been asked for conditionals by several, several students, several people. So I thought I'll do it in two parts. The first one is four forms of conditionals, the basics, so that there is no confusion. And I'm going to do all the forms, including your statements, questions, imperatives. So pay attention. I'm Usha Pandit, your MindSprings English teacher. And if you like this video, do press the like button. Make sure you subscribe and you give me a comment. Ask your queries in the description box. There are some exercises at the end and I will put the answers in the description box so that you can tell whether you have understood the lesson. So let's begin right away. So why conditionals? Why do we need conditionals? We need conditionals because as human beings, we tend to think about the past, present and future. We've got a mind, we've got memories and we plan and we predict and we imagine and we fantasize and we hypothesize. What if we indulge in wishful thinking, we regret past actions, we hope circumstances were different, we wonder about a different destiny or we wonder about the results of our actions behaviors, decisions that we made in the past and their impact on our present or on the future. And we wonder what would it would have been had they been different. So we indulge in a lot of thinking, some of which are real and some of which are unreal. To express these thoughts, we need conditionals. They help us to avoid confusion and convey intention. So we need to have our intention should be clear. So when we talk about a conditional, people should know that it's not real, but you are thinking about something in the from the past or you're imagining something. They need to know that. Otherwise, they will get confused. So that's why we need conditionals. The structure of a conditional sentence. Now, what is your structure? It has two clauses, first of all. You have a main clause and you have an if clause or a conditional clause. A conditional or an if clause is always a subordinate clause. And it's what we call the adverbial clause of condition, which we have done. But you need to make that connection. In such complex sentences. So when you have a subordinating clause, what happens? You have what is called a complex sentence. The result or the consequence clause is your main clause. So the result clause is your main clause and the if clause is your condition clause. This is all you need to remember as far as structure is concerned. For example, if I wake up late, I will miss the bus. Now you've got two things here. One is a condition about waking up late and missing the bus is my main clause. Now you'll notice that if I start the sentence with a subordinate clause, like if, then I need a comma. But I can also write it as I will miss the bus if I wake up. In which case I am using a main clause. there. I'm not using starting with subordinate and then I don't need a comma. So this comma is very important in conditional clauses. So this is your structure. Okay. Now let's look at the types of conditional clauses. Basically, there are four conditional clauses. Zero, one, two, three. This is all you need to remember. They express real and unreal situations and sometimes the imaginary or even the impossible situations. The zero conditional is made of the present tense in the main clause and the present tense in the conditional. Both are present tense. If the child is hungry, it cries for milk. I've underlined your verb so you'll see that it's present and present. The first conditional has a present and future. Present in your if clause 
if we are late present we will get a taxi to go home future will get future so present and future the second conditional has a simple past in the eighth clause and a would plus infinitive verb what is infinitive infinitive is your to go to come to sing to dance etc and you just take that verb which is go sing dance etc and that is called your infinitive verb or your v1 so would plus v1 and simple past in the if clause found if he found it hard i would help him would plus help this is your second conditional and your third conditional is past perfect which is had caught if they had caught the thief had caught past perfect they would have taken him to jail would have plus past participle taken caught is past participle taken is also past participle both are past participles in the first one it makes up the past perfect tense had plus caught here would have plus taken makes it a modal verb but it is would have plus past participle again so just remember this these are your four different uh, conditionals but they are the basic conditionals 0 1 2 3 present 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 future past would plus v1 past perfect would have plus v3 this is your formula nothing more to remember let's go step by step and look at each of them properly now now your zero conditional which is your present and present is normally used for scientific and universal truths so if you got the scientific facts like if water freezes it turns to ice true for all times scientific facts never change the sun rises in the east the earth uh, you know uh, orbits around the uh, earth is a planet or the moon orbits around the the earth these are all 100% true so scientific facts universal truths present plus present remember this these clauses can be interchanged with the main clause leading like i told you you can put the if clause first or you can put the main clause just remember the comma that's all you need to remember so you can say water turns to ice if it freezes can also be done this combination is used when the result is always true and constant and does not change now this is not just for universal facts you can also use it for yourself if something is 100% true about you you can use a present and present if i drink co coffee i cannot sleep this is a truth about me it may not be true for you but for me it's always true so i can use a present and present if you don't eat you get hungry this is true for everybody all of humanity so therefore it is a general truth this is also used in another place when you talk about proverbs so there are many proverbs with two present tenses sometimes they have an if clause like if you live by the sword you die by the sword or you might have wishes were horses beggars would ride so you have if words sometimes you don't have an if word you just have a proverb but you have two parts and one part will be a condition in such cases you will have two present tenses you also use it for imperatives imperatives are orders or commands that are given if you drop garbage pick it up you will find this in a lot of place public places where they give you a command or an order saying that you are not supposed to do this or you must do this if you do this then this is the fine or if you do this this will happen to you etc when i call you answer the phone so you might say this you might give it as an order when i call you answer your teacher might give you a command of what you should be doing in a classroom if you come by drop in both are present tense see 
because it is a it's a command if in some cases if could mean possibility whereas when shows certainty if i say when you come drop in means you are going to come it's only a matter of time but if i say if you come drop in means you may or may not come that is the difference between if and when when is always connected with time if is connected with possibility let's look at the first conditional which is the simple present and simple future now this shows real possibility it shows prediction it shows logical prediction which means if something happens in the present something will definitely happen in the future most common tense is this one that we use in everyday life when we are not imagining anything we are talking about real things that are going to happen real consequences real results we use the first conditional so the present tense and the conditional and future tense in the main clause if it rains we will get wet 100% isn't it if we don't go now we will be late that is also 100% if you the movie starts at 3 o'clock and if it's 2:45 now then if i if you say if we don't go now we'll be late 100% you will be late you will miss half of it if we take the car we will reach faster certainly you will reach faster because the car will travel faster than walking so therefore they are predictable they are logical and they are real first conditional if we take the car what is the difference between a zero conditional and a first conditional if we take the car we reach faster is zero conditional present and present if we take the car we will reach faster is first conditional present and future what's the difference you can say both certainly you can say both but if i say if we take the car we reach faster i'm talking generally for all times because a car is faster than other modes of transport so therefore if we take the car we reach faster is general if we take the car we will reach faster means i'm talking about today i'm talking about the present circumstance we are just waiting to go out now and i'm saying suppose suppose someone says should we take the car and i say if we take the car we will reach faster means 100% today we will reach faster the first one is a general result the first, second one is a specific result so that's a difference between zero and first condition the second conditional is simple past plus would plus infinitive like i told you would go would come would sing would dance etc second conditional is used for hypothetical or imaginary conditions so if i'm sitting and imagining something then i use this condition they are unreal something i'm talking about the past about something happening not something that happened in the past i'm talking about if something happened in the past the past has already gone it has not happened so whatever i say now about the present or the future is going to be false because the condition is dependent on the past the conditional clause is about the past which did not happen so it's just my imagination they are unreal conditional clauses uses the past tense which cannot it's done dusted cannot be recalled and therefore the infinite the possibility in the future is also unreal if it rained we would get wet if it rained we talking about the past it didn't rain if it rained we would get wet we will never get wet because it didn't rain if i won the lottery did i win the lottery no but if i won means i'm sitting and imagining if i won oh so nice it would have been this is what i'm doing i would buy this is what you call khayali pulao isn't it you are sitting and daydreaming if i were a doctor i would invent a cure so people love to think like this 
it just makes you feel happy. It allows you to think of possibilities where you don't have to work too much. Just think about oh, what it would, I would have done this, I would have done that. So that would plus infinitive. Were you a stronger man, you would forgive the weak. Are you a stronger man? No. Because you've not forgiven anybody and you will not forgive also. So if the if clauses in these sentences are untrue, because the past is untrue, it did not happen, the actions should have happened, they didn't. And therefore the result clause is simply wishful thinking and hence false. False one, second condition. Past and would plus infinitive. Let's look at the third condition. The third conditional is worse than the second conditional. Because if that was the past tense, this is the past perfect tense. So this is an impossible past. Here we use the past perfect tense in the conditional clause and then the would have plus past participle in the main clause. So if it had rained, which means it's not if it rained, but if it had rained, which means even more we are taking it backwards and it is completely false. Would have been wet. Never going to happen. It did not rain. Confirmed. And it will. you will never get wet. Confirmed again. Certain. So therefore, this is completely impossible. If I hadn't been so busy, I would have helped you to shift. Now, this is how we talk. We, do, we say this a lot. Now, don't say, oh, it is impossible. So we never say it. We say it all the time. We say it to appease people. We say it to make them feel better. If you hadn't been so busy, if the, I hadn't been so busy, if I hadn't been, you know, if I uh, hadn't, if I hadn't had guests at home, you could have stayed with me. We talk like this. But then that's not true. It's like how you say in Hindi, bolne mein kya jata hai. It's that. You're basically saying things to comfort them. So you hadn't, you had been busy. So there's, what, what is the point? When you're busy, what, what's the point in saying, if I had, hadn't been busy? Are, but you were busy. I would have helped. Is also false. Because you were busy. So there's no question of talking about what you would have done is all just, you know, just talk. So the intention is to just say comforting words. If I had become a doctor, I would have cured many people. Now I can keep on saying a whole bunch of things. If I had been the king, I would have done this. If I had been the prime minister, I would have uh, eradicated poverty. I can, the sky is the limit to how you can go with the third conditional. So therefore, guys, this is an impossible condition. But people use it all the time. So don't say this is not used. This is used. We use it all the time. But it's good to know that this is the language of the third conditioner. Use of initial word had. Now very often you don't use that if. You just use had. So for example had you come earlier you would have met the film star. So what are you actually saying? You're saying, if you had come earlier, you would have met the film star. That's what you are actually saying. What have you done? You've dropped the if. And that you had, you have inverted to had you. So instead of saying you had come, you are saying had you come. This is a stylistic way in which you express the conditional. And it's very sophisticated. Try and use it in your writing. Try and use it in your speech. And it's very impressive. So had you been a taller girl, you would have reached the top. It's a third conditional. It's impossible. But it's very useful when you speak and when you write. If you had been taller is what you are trying to say. Both sentences are clauses that show the impossible past, which will never happen. So the future result also is impossible and unreal. It's idle speculation. In this type of sentence, we are just dropping that if and inverting the subject and verb. Questions with zero and first conditional. Let's come to questions. 
questions with conditionals need the subject verb inversions. So when you ask a question, you invert the subject and the verb. You don't, in a statement, you say, use the subject verb. Subject is followed by the verb. So if I say, you, you should come home. You should come home. You subject should come verb and then home or what? You should come. Should you come? When I invert it, it becomes a question. My name is Usha. Is your name? When you invert it, it becomes a question. So it's just the question inversion, nothing else. But the inversion is in your main clause. It's not in your if clause. If clause has no inversion. So in the zero, present plus present, do you break out in rash if you eat peanuts? Is a question. Do you, do you break out? Not you do. It's do you, it's not you do. You do is subject and verb, it's a statement. Now you do break out in rash if you eat peanuts is wrong. Do you break out is the correct way. Shall we run to the store if it begins to rain? Shall we run? Not we shall run. If someone says we shall run to the store if it uh, rains, we shall run to the store. People talk like this, it is completely wrong. Be careful to do that inversion when you ask a question with a conditional. First conditional, what will you do if you fail the test? Not what you will do, but people talk like this, don't they? What you will do if you fail the test? Wrong. What will you do? Will you come if I call you? You will come if I call you? Is wrong. Will you come if I call you? Is correct. Inversion. So please make sure that you practice this orally. Say it many times so that you don't ask questions without inversions. In a conditional uh, question, the it becomes harder to because there is a lot of words that you have to put in. You've got your past perfect and you've got and then the same sentence you've got your would have plus past participle. You've got all these things and then you've got an inversion. Sometimes it can, if you try to do it with grammar, it can become extremely difficult. So don't try to do that. Instead of that, say it many times and it will become natural. So let's see what happens in the second and third condition, which is harder. Same thing, subject verb inversion. If clause, no inversion. Second conditional, what would you do if your business failed? Not what you would do if your business failed is wrong. What would you do? What would you do? So do this stem. What would you do? What would you do if your business failed? What would you do if, um, you know, uh, you got a transfer? What would you do if you, what would you do? Keep on thinking of many different scenarios and saying these sentences over and over again. And not only will you learn conditionals, but you will be able to speak and write better. How would you respond if they asked you tough questions? Not how you would respond is wrong. How would you respond? How would you respond? How would you give? How would you go? How would you come? How would you come if there is a bus strike? How would you come if the trains are on strike, etc.? So you can ask any number of questions, but you need to practice the stem. Third conditional, would you have driven? If me, if I hadn't owned a car, would you have would you have driven me if I if I hadn't owned a car? So see, it's a mouthful. Would you have driven me? If you hadn't owned it, should be. If you hadn't owned a car, would you have driven me if you hadn't owned a car? Would you have driven me? Would you have taken me? Would you have uh, come to my house? Would you have, uh, uh, you know, taught my child? You can ask any number of, but this would you have, would you have, would you have, say it many times and then automatically that conditional will follow. If you hadn't, if you hadn't, if you hadn't owned, if you hadn't taken, if you hadn't uh, walked, if you hadn't uh, studied, etc. Just practice it. If you hadn't graduated, how would your life have been? How would your life have been? 
what would have happened if you had made that decision? What would have, now if you analyze these sentences, you will find it to be past perfect plus would have plus past parts. But I'm more concerned about you being able to say this really quickly and saying it in many situations so that speech and writing become amazing as far as you are concerned. So practice it. Imperatives and proverbs to conditionals. I told you imperatives and proverbs are normally zero conditional. But in an examination, they might ask you to change it to first or second conditional. So study or fail is a zero conditional. That's like an imperative. Study or fail. You know. So this is your, uh, you know, do or die kind of things that they say. Proverbs, two present tenses. This is said as a truth warning before the event or foretelling the consequences. So it's like a warning, you know, study or fail. Just two words, study or fail. The first conditional, how would you change that? You'd say, if you do not study, you will fail, present and future. There's a strict warning in the condition that a certain result is predicted. You will fail if you don't study. Common sense. Second conditional, if you studied, you would not fail. Did you study? No. So you would not fail is also up in the air. Nobody knows. Opposite prediction you're doing. You would not fail. You can't say if you studied, you would fail. It will go wrong. So be careful on where you need to put a negative when you make these changes. The original meaning must not change. Okay. The second, third conditional, if you had studied, you would not have failed. What does that mean? That means you have already failed now. If you had studied, it's already gone. Time has passed and gone. You did not study and you have already failed now. So if this is just now just talking, you know, are, if you had studied, it would have been so good. Are, why didn't you study? It is like that. It's somebody just, now you are just talking either to console the person or you are talking in order to reprimand the person but you are basically the time has gone and the result has been the opposite of that warning study or fail. So it's an unheeded warning and the results are certain of failure not of success. Most proverbs are zero conditionals or sometimes they are second conditionals. Spare the rod, spoil the child. If you spare the rod, you will spoil the child, first conditional. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride is a second condition. Were, past tense, would ride, would plus infinitive, second conditional. If wishes had been horses, beggars would have ridden on them, third conditional. So I've changed that second conditional to the third condition. So these can be interchanged. Just remember the structure and you will get 100% in your exams. It's easy peasy. Use of unless instead of if. This is another one. So people use unless. You get it in a lot of exams, in fill in the blanks, in all sorts of situations where they ask you to use unless, start with unless, use unless, etc. So unless actually means if not. It's a negative. Without the word not, unless makes a negative. So, if it replaces the word not. If you do not study hard, you will not pass. First conditional. Unless you study hard, you will not pass. See, I have highlighted the if not in red. That is what you are replacing with unless. You are replacing the if not with unless. If you do not sleep now, you will not wake up on time tomorrow. So, unless you sleep now, you will not wake up. That main clause, you will not wake up, doesn't change. It remains the same. What is changing is that if not is changing to unless. That's all you need to remember. It's so easy. But when people get the unless, they get completely confused and they make all kinds of mistakes. So, don't do that. Just remember if clause, the if not is changed to unless. The main clause remains exactly as it is. And you'll be fine with your unless. More examples. If you do not help them, the men will drown. 
unless you help them, the men will drown, unless plus present, unless plus past, unless plus past perfect, I've given you the whole lot. So that you are able to see how the changes happen when you use unless with any of these tenses. First conditional, second conditional, third conditional. So this is your unless. Read through them carefully. Look at the tenses. Understand a little bit. Do some exercises and you will be fine. Now we come to exercises. We finished the first part. We've done a lot of work with 0, 1, 2, 3 conditionals. We've done questions. We've done imperatives. We've done had. We've done use uh, unless. We've done a lot of little things. And now we look at how you underline the verbs. That's very important. You need to identify the sentences as 0, 1, 2, or 3. Just decide which one it is. So underline the verbs, otherwise you won't be able to tell whether it's 0, 1, 2, or 3 conditionals. And then if you find it, it's a first, 0 conditional, you change it to 1 and 3 or 1 and 2. Change it to any two other forms. And the answers I will put in the description box for you to see. So there are eight sentences. Pause the video, start doing it and then check your answers in the description box. So thank you for watching people. I hope it's been a great experience, conditional, basic conditionals, and I hope you're feeling a lot more confident now. So till we meet again, keep smiling.